Wonderful that you decided. You can play with me. Interactively. Here in this workshop where we're going to go on a journey to explore you and what you can bring out into the world. And we'll do it over this wonderful topic of the Empowered Women Summit, because that's already oof, a lot in it by itself. And then stepping into the light, your decision to go, and very importantly, to shine, speaking while you bring out your message and your talents into the world. It make you think, right? <laughs> Wonderful. So calm down now for the moment. And um, before we delve into exploring. I invite you for some breathing to take a moment to feel yourself, to acknowledge yourself and your presence right here now. So what is your style of breathing? Ah, you thought I would dictate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll give you suggestions. You know, sometimes with my German, uh, please don't be surprised if I bring in the German word or I have to fish <laughs> for English word to bring. Sometimes if I can't remember a word, it doesn't matter. It doesn't come in any language. So what is your rhythm? Take a few breaths and see what it is. Do you breathe with your mouth closed, as I just did? Do you have your mouth open? Do you even inhale through your nose when you have your mouth open? Do you put your tongue up? You breathe in your mouth, through your nose deeply. And exhale through your mouth. And what's the next breath? Does it go in through your mouth again or in through the nose? You know a lot of questions. <laughs> Become aware of you your unique style, your rhythm. This is why I'm starting with this. Because our breath is what makes us live here on earth. The breath is, it gives us oomph to move forward, to step into the light, to be the woman you are, that I am, that we are. Yeah, and when you breathe in, how deep does your breath go? Into your lungs? Or further down? Ooh. <laughs> In your belly? Is it a shallow breath? Is it a rather deep breath? Do you feel how your body moves in and out? Or do you notice that you go, <laughs> I'm exaggerating a little bit, but just that you become aware. And then the question is, do you take in a breath and hold it? <sighs> and 
you exhale quicker than you inhaled or you take a deep breath in so you had now a lot of play with your breath trying a few other things that maybe feel more comfortable or less comfortable wonderful so I invite you to do that whenever you um, desire to play a little bit because where does your breath your rhythm come from does it come through a moment where you changed your breath style because you experienced something surprisingly something shockingly are you breathing the style of your mother that you adapted while you were in the womb Mom, we didn't breathe the way we breathe now, but you took that into your cell memory. Do you like the air that you breathe? Maybe you don't like the smell or you're more sensitive to a sense. Or you may not like the taste on your mouth when you breathe in or breathe out. Or maybe you can't. Some thing you, you tightened somewhere in your lung, in your throat, in your nose. So play. And observe also where what your rhythm is of inhale. The moment between the inhale and the exhale. If you hold it for a while, if you don't, your exhale, is it smooth, is it fast, if it's tight? and the time in between. Play with it. <laughs> Wonderful. So I hope you just have time now to, to move into your, into your body. Right? We're speaking about the Empowered Women's Summit. So are you as a woman empowered? Or you came here to the summit to be empowered. And I don't know if you listened to the first time, uh, my first segment on the summit, uh, where I mentioned that I love to play with words. I love to go to the roots or the root of a word or expressions. So even empowerment, right? So I'm, I'm playing now with empowerment. Uh, we want to have power, you want to have power, I want to have power. That's what the one, yeah, the, the strong. So we have to inhale and have that breath. If we want to push something through, push something aside or lift someone up, push something down, right? So that is just the, the, the physical strength. And that plays a role with our breath. And you have the most control about that. No one else. So even if uh, you, you move, do you have moments where when you have to move quicker, you lose your breath, it's your body, in a way fit enough to get you where you want to go, to be the woman you want to be, to hold the vibration in your body and to send it out, to radiate it out. What else is empowering for you? your smile, right? To put yourself in a good mood, into a, a higher vibration. When you come, before you come together with others, when you're alone, with your family. A 
I had to take a deep breath and was thinking about my family. See, when we think about them, we just we take them in. To bring in your wisdom, right? To live your principles, your purpose, you can call it, while you're here on earth, when you are sturdy, fully feeling secure and expressing that, you've empowered yourself. You become less scared of approaching whoever you desire, acting on your own intuition. Ah, there's our fly from yesterday. Bringing us the energy of zoom, 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 and moving forward. empower yourself to give you what you need so sometimes you want to be further back in the background of a situation more in the forefront you want time alone or you want to be networking right or you want to be on stage and then you want to maybe write your songs at home or paint so you retrieve a little bit and that interplay Right? That's also what is your rhythm? Are the more outward, more inward? So for me, it is I have times I like to be by myself and I can stay a long time by myself. And then I desire to go out into the world and explore it and see it and, and speak with uh, people from all different cultures, different genders, different ages. I love seeing people's beauty. <laughs> or just nature. Can I go out alone to be with my animals or in the garden or in the woods or in the ocean? So feel that. Where do you like to be? Somewhere where is water? In the desert? In the mountains? In the woods. I like it green. Flowers when they're blooming. Now, like in fall, I love the uh, here in Germany, the uh, colors are changing beautifully. I do miss the dark, dark sweet gum red that you have in the US. Or maybe somewhere else where you live. We don't have those here in Germany, but when I lived in the US, oh, I love that red. The steps, how it changes. Is your home empowering you? Important to be the woman that you are, where you can take time for yourself to feel comfortable, to just sit back. Is your home nourishing? Is everything in your home medicine from a chair, the plant, your earrings, clothing, right? Your table, the paintings, the color on the walls. Is a room light? I, I love a lot of windows in my rooms so the sun can shine in. <laughs> because I love to write in the sun or sit and think. It's like my meditation, sitting in the sun. Con Conversing with the sun, listening to the birds and gazing at nature. So what is it for you? There's a song for you to delve in and to feel what is medicine for you? For your heart, for your body. So you can be calm. Nyawoya unna inna ya mohya nyawoya mawaya ya 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 nyawoya 
be fully you, to express yourself, to stand sovereign on stage in front of a person you want to speak with, sitting comfortable in a conversation, standing there and singing to the world. Wonderful. <laughs> I love it. Do you feel being a woman? Hmm. Ooh, <laughs> there's some breath in and out. Sometimes you feel comfortable, sometimes not. Sometimes you had experiences you didn't like. Sometimes you had some great ones that you did. You have to prove yourself often to be heard, to be seen. You have to hide sometimes, make yourself smaller, right? Oh, I did that too, you know, I slacked a little bit like that. I was very skinny for a while when I was little very quiet. After I went out as a little girl, very joyous and seeing a lot and telling people what I sensed, speaking my truth. 
right? And then most people didn't understand. So I closed up and tightened. My muscles were very tight. So I invite you to, to feel, we did that a little bit through the breath. Feel your bio or, 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 or um, embrace it, stroke it, feel it. You do that often enough. Just becoming aware, the sensing, and at the same time, you're giving energy from your fingers, from your hands to yourself. Universal energy, right? Cosmic vibrancy, right into your cells. A lot. Tapping, I just like that. Where we can revitalize. <laughs> yeah. And we, we did it for cheeks. We, you know, pinch to get a little rosier. We do a lot of movements, like when you have headaches or we think, right? When we think, we start stimulating our heads. We go like, ah, oh, sit down. You know, there's all these, these waves where we touch when we do certain actions. So observe yourself. When you stimulate, yourself to do certain tasks. <sighs> and if you want to do something, you big exhale to go out into the world and decide that, yes, I'm not afraid anymore. Yeah? So even there, when you take in this breath and take in that breath again and fill it right below your breasts, this is a space many of you collapse close in yeah maybe the breast in your opinion or by someone else's judgment opinion is too small too big too i don't know the nipple i don't know nipples are not the right ones not the same height don't fill in the bra don't push you know stick up maybe they don't pop up you may have several children you have to feed I remember someone saying she wouldn't breastfeed because her husband didn't want her to have saggy breasts when she's older. You know, where do, why do we listen to someone else? Giving our beautiful, powerful medicine that is so unique to our child. Oh, that's a whole different topic, but that is moving into womanhood giving the best further, the best of us, the most beautiful. So the best is the most beautiful. When you share, you're carrying your love, your gifts, starting with this little individual or anyone out there in the world. So if you think about it, right, you spread out all this medicine and energy from there. It's beautifully designed. Who can design something like this? No one. Right? They grow when there is milk needed. They change over time, over age. They adapt. Perfect. Why do we put it in, 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 in to bras if we don't need it? Some do need the support. But I invite you to, you know, take your breasts sometimes in your hands and noticing what they are, their form. And not just to observe if they got cancer or something, you know, it's like, but it's a part of you. It's, it's really your medicine. If you're a healer, it, you heal out of this area. It's like, a, <laughs> right? Our energies, uh, we were talking about empowerment, standing in your fullness. That is when you bring in your, your, the energy from the earth, you bring in the energy from the skies, and they come together and, and you send it out like this, and where does it come from? This area, you know, right there. And if we go forward and, and, and bend in, what does it do? It does something to our voice, it does to our breath, makes us smaller, yeah? We, we're taught not to take in so much space. Yes, take as much space as you want to, and, and you expand even further, because we can share with everyone and dance. It's a new era. 
no, no vibrations. Take advantage of that. Become you. And, and ensure also your hips. You know, too many, often we walk like soldiers because the soldiers had to talk. We just observed that. But we women don't walk this way. We have hips. Child birthing hips. Sexual. We use that. It is, you know, our unis are power. It is, is, we heal with that as well. We soak in, we send out. We do not just send out with our mouth. We send out with the eyes. Out of every particle, out of your skin, you breathe in and out, right? It's huge organ. But you also send your energy out. That makes you shine later and radiate. If you t we tighten and, and, and dense up, and maybe, yes, you have been in situations. Are you in them now? Can you get out of them? Can you change something so you're not in those situations? To ask for help, you know, like that's something we're learning here in the, in the summit, to be there for each other. To uplift each other. So observe people from other cultures, you know, Germany in the West, I think that's going back to the swag. We don't have it when we walk. From other cultures on different continents, they have it. Observe them. How do they walk? Play with it. Maybe you do something like African dance or the salsa and meringue, you know. They will be walk wider, be more in your knees. Yeah. Also, don't pull in your your belly anymore when you walk. You know, get your height, your elegance, that you're beautiful woman, and you in hold by exhaling out everything that is not yours, and inhaling this beautiful crisp air. The cosmos and feed yourself and your body and relax and expand and widen far, 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 far out. Far, 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 far out. And you don't have to tighten and put up the shield, right? Because then the particles, they come and, and, they, and it's hard. You have to hold up that shield. You need to use power for things that are not important. Throw that shield away and go out far, become vast. And take in your space. And then anything that comes your way, you can decide if you want to have an exchange with it or not, any particle. If not, it just flies right through. If you meet women, Stay with those that you feel really comfortable, safe, and secure, where you can open up, where you can be yourself. Right? An empowered woman is herself. She knows herself. All of the nooks, cranes, right? Every, every part, every uh, facet. Do you know all your facets? And here at the summit, it's a beautiful, or any summit, where, you, where there's a gathering of women. Uh, share yourself. Speak about how you function. Educate others so they can understand you better. Yeah? What makes you tick? Where do you need help? Provide support to others. Observe them. Look behind. Take the time to look behind what they're saying, how they're acting, how they're moving. Look right into their eyes. And approach someone if they need help. It's now the time I 
believe where we you know we go grab down someone and, and lift them up higher even than us or if you want to talk for a while you you know you lift them up to right now and then you send them higher because the nice thing is up there is someone who's going to do the same thing for you pull you up <laughs> so you don't have to <sighs> yeah someone can come from the back and push you it's much easier it's lighter this is now the time and at the same time we exchange our wisdom we inspire um when we come together right when you come tell me a little bit about you i learned something i learned from your experience how you handled it um that you're able to do it i can find astonishing and i can say oh my god if you can do it i can do it Let people get back to you. Say, if you're not ready now, I'm here whenever you need me. Well, this is um, going to be the way to go. Right? We, we're one human being, oneness. We are connected to everything on this earth. So also to every other woman. We can sense each other. We can feel each other. Um, we understand each other. Even if we don't speak their language. The needs are the same. If you think about it, we all want to be loved. So take the time to provide love to someone else be courageous with what with your smiles with your touch with a hand with a hug beautiful words what your presence just being there sitting next to someone when they uh, need help with writing. I have asked friends to do that or if I know there's a room I can't clean up and I know it needs to because it's in my mind and then I can't uh, move on. Two or three times in my life I wanted to get rid of things. I had a friend come over and just be there. And we also make sure that I do it. And I could go through all of the motion and she would just be present. Be there for someone else. And I'm happy to be there for you. And so we move each other forward faster, faster, because speed is needed, speed is needed. Yeah, it is time now for you to move into uniquely you to use all of your gifts that you have joy and ease doing it so others can come to you for support because I think there is going to be a vast movement toward that. So the more you go and be yourself or is it live your being the easier it is for others to, in a way, switch, click to you and understand you and know your gifts, the strengths of them. And then they can ask more clearly or become aware more clearly what they need. Crisp. So what is my exchange? I think the most important principle for me is, is, is absolute beauty. Seeing beauty in myself was the first step. It was easy for me to see it outside. Yeah, I did a little reverse. But at the end, did we see our, that you see your beauty in yourself? That you can see then 
with much more ease the beauty in someone else, maybe in me, <laughs> or the woman right next to you. And when we have this different kind of relation, we also relate differently to this beautiful planet that we have outside. Or maybe you're outside already, or inside we even have, right? Plants and animals. We respect each other, sense each other, and are there for each other. So be the empowered woman that you are. Share your gift, your talents, your rhythm with all of us. Thank you. Step into the light. It's a beautiful visual, I think. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like the double light. It can be you step onto a stage, you know, when these beams come um, and everything is dark around you and you stand there in your full presence. But also when you're outdoors, right, in the um, clearing, when the sun rays come right through and highlights an area and even surrounded by trees, I guess circle a stage, right? Uh, it takes courage, I believe. And I congratulate you on doing it, on having made a decision to step, because that is so important to make the decision to step. forward. But how do you do that, right? So before you move into this action of stepping, you become aware of yourself. Maybe what is still missing in your life to facilitate this movement. Do you feel fit enough? Do you feel uh, enough energized? Are strings to other people holding you back? Are there old um, things that are not arranged yet or cleared with other people that hold you back a little bit or don't free you up to move. So maybe take a look if, and if you can let them go, if you can um, take the time to finish those projects, do what you told others you would do. So it's out of your mind. This frees you up. Because this freedom, right, it comes with um, this lightness to move. Then it becomes very easy. Is there something also that wants to still emerge? That you really can be you as you step? Because you don't feel like stepping forward anymore the way you have been doing it before. Because it doesn't, didn't bring you the results that didn't provide you with the feeling you desired to sense within yourself. You take the time to see what is needed for this action, to set the intention, right? Because before we act, we set the intention, we get ourselves pulled by our vision. So what is your vision? Where do you want to step into? 
It's also moving from the dark to the light, right? To show your full beauty. Other places you don't find yourself beautiful. But you are. <laughs> you are very beautiful. We're a, a, a beautiful being coming onto this earth with so much love to share. Just as a base and to share our light and our energy to be present, to soak everything in. So this is how you come, fully equipped. This is how most people see you. So is there fear that's making you move forward every time you decide to step forward? Judgment, self-talk that is destructive. Most of the time it's worse than what anyone else thinks. Even, you know, if people say, oh, I wouldn't do it, I should. In a way, they may be just afraid to do it, but in a way they wish that you do it so they can do it. Because think about it, who comes into interaction with you, in conversation with you before you do this step? So it's already people that are, have interest in doing it. Otherwise, why would you speak about it? Yeah, so this is also interesting to see. That everyone that comes now and says maybe even something that you shouldn't do, really, they're saying you should. Think about that. <laughs> because they have not seen another way. They come with different experiences than you do. Thank them for sharing. Maybe even ask them about their experience. Yeah, because why did they take the time to talk with you? And learn from it and maybe build it into what you speak and bring your message out to. Exactly the person that was trying to hold you back. So when you still listen to others, what are you not listening to within yourself? your heart, if you connect to your heart, connect to your heart, you can feel its warmth, its beat, it's beating for you, creating your life's speed, rhythm. <laughs> it's beating for you. You don't even have to think about it, it keeps on beating. In a way, it's applauding you. And the same as we did with the beginning, our breath, it's an automatic. So these are the two things that enliven you. So what is in there to celebrate you? Yeah. And bring it out. Let's take a look at that. Take a moment to, to, to feel comfortable where you sit. How does it feel where you're sitting on? Can you sense it, the material, the texture? You can touch it. Your eyes open or closed. What do you feel in front of you? If you're inside, or outdoors, you feel the wind, to 
feel the plant or maybe a pet at home or a person sitting in front of you now. Take it all in. Feel it with your whole body, the whole space and even your expanded you. What do you feel behind you? The wind. What do you hear? The birds. So it's very quiet. Nothing outside. Even if you're inside, you don't hear the cars even. Is it easier to feel much more what is in front of you than what is behind you? And what is what do you feel now aware of on your right side? On your left side? How far out can you feel sense? It's in your energy. Coming away of what's surrounding you. Is there a bush? Is there a wall? We wiggle a little bit to see where you get naturally drawn to more. What's up above you? The ceiling, the sky, the sun, the stars, the galaxies, the clouds, maybe canopy, the leaves, the branches, bird, butterfly, an insect. And again, what is below you now? Maybe you're sitting on the grass, on a rock. Do you feel the earth? Do you feel movement in the earth? Maybe of the worms, the insects? And then take it all in. What is above, what is below, what is in front, what's behind. It's all connected, it all understands you. You're surrounded by the one. Earth, universe, cosmos, the one light, the one sound, the one intention. So you feel how you're supported, how you can even lean back into it or forward into it. Now you feel safe to bring and let arise what desires to be arise, to arise. And for you to bring out. You don't feel alone anymore. Because you sense this connectivity, connectiveness. <laughs> As you're always connecting, <laughs> exchanging your wisdom, what is around you. And this is a good exercise. You can do it uh, a few times, wherever you go in a different atmosphere to really sense your surrounding, to take it in. And maybe you even feel light beings or other energies. You can take in thoughts. You hear trees speak, animals speak, you know, whatever is yours. Play with it, play with it. And then it becomes more clear and you're more certain in setting your intention, following the vision you decided to follow. Right, for me it was, um, my vision is still the same. And there are a lot of in-between steps. So, you know, I have my big vision and I'm setting some incremental visions. So to be on stage, around the world, to meet people of all cultures, to sing, to dance, to use my hands with energy, to embrace people, hug them. <laughs> That's my lineage. I always know, or I always knew, that it's coming and it is even more coming. And it has come, but it's expanding even further. Yeah, like with that radio show that I started, starting becoming more secure and then I knew I wanted to bring out the voice. So I started with the teleconferences, with friends 
than with people I did not know so much. And it, later, um, you know, with the right show where I wouldn't get censored, where I didn't have to censor myself, that I could live all of me. And then the actions become very easy. If you have the big vision that is in a way pulling you, and you know as you follow your vision, others will follow you, because they know you are very clear and you're determined. They sense it. They go with you. That's beautiful. So go ahead and decide on it. What you want. How you want to live. Important, how do you want to live? What do you want to experience? Think big. You're a grand being, your thoughts can be big, your creations can be vast. Act on your vastness. If you're noticing you're moving in, okay, then notices become aware. What is it? What wants to arise? What is there that has been, you have been reacting to and closed up a little bit? Look at it, take your time. Dissolve it, react to it, maybe there's a new creation that can be happening, uh, new solutions arise, or you just cut it, whatever you want, whatever feels right, whatever you know is right, right, you're a woman who's going to walk or is walking her knowledge. So act on your knowledge. So what also supports uh, is interesting. Do you know what times to act? When are your times? What is your rhythm when you are the most creative? When do you need sleep? Or rest? And if you know it, do you follow it? So for me, mine are like uh, 11 ish one during the day, especially also when the sun shines, that's I become creative, I'm quiet. I've done a little mylene each time, I've done a little cleaning. My son has been brought out of the house, right? In the afternoon, it's like five ish again. So when the, in the winter, it's so like when the sun is setting. Um, and then again, for sure, in the evening, I'm creative. As a student, as landscape architect, I could draw all night. When I painted in Atlanta, I went to the studios in the evening, could paint at night then as well. Or it was the time before lunch. And sometimes it became a problem, that rhythm. Um, I, I moved out of it, for example, when I had my son, I was more acting in his rhythm, even though we, we had a beautiful game, sometimes I had him on, on a dance on my back while I was painting. What, what, is, what is your rhythm? So when then in the morning now, yes, I have to get up at six to get him ready for school. Uh, then it, that's a little difficult. I need a lot of sleep. I like to sleep a lot. And um, so then I have to take sometimes a rest in the morning. So then I, you know, everyone is out of the house, then I can take a nap. Or in the afternoon, then I take a nap. Sometimes it's 15 minutes, sometimes an hour and a half. It doesn't matter. But I need to feel replenished so I can uh, 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 think or be alert, calm, rested, peaceful inside. Sometimes if I'm tired, I'm not peaceful inside. Sometimes I have to lie down also because I know I have to travel or get new ideas and new inspiration. Yeah, so see when are your times and that's when you're most creative and the other's time just don't 
work on certain things. That's the time when you play, you, you have fun cooking, you go for a walk, you do whole homework, you do busy work of, of, of cleaning up an area. This also is very energetic, provides energy for you. Right? Because what, what do we need? So you need medicine to, to keep you moving on forward, to create this underending uh, momentum. So you have a place to move in for, for replenishing yourself. So are there paintings that are your medicine at home? Or you, do you do something crafty? Or do you have a beautiful chair? You sit in bed fabrics. Do you need a little clutter or no clutter? A little clutter is the wrong word. So creative things everywhere you know, that you can play with, or do you like it more minimalistic? And is it the way you are? Or are you cleaning up because of someone else, but it's too clean for you, then you can't be wild enough? Or is there someone that is cluttering your space and you like it minimal, or you even? So see why this happened, why it's not it, it, the way it is, and gently start changing it so that everything in your home becomes your medicine. Everything you eat becomes your medicine. Anything you put on your skin. Anything you put on your skin. On your hair. Is it medicine for you? I have a shampoo that's fermented, ferments, and it goes with me. And I can notice if I'm, I've set that intention with that shampoo. If it's, I'm following my own intention, I like to do little check <laughs> things in my life. I do ask all sometimes friends if I'm, when I, if I'm weaving away or can I have another couple of eyes looking on my life. I love that. So where are you stepping into now? What is you want to create? Is it the stage like I see, you know, with thousands of people? Hundreds I've done, thousands not yet. But I know it's coming. Or are you more on the in the backstage, are you more the one leading people to be seen? Or more of an advisor to someone? But even those have to see you, right? Go and ask your advice. So who are you starting to advise? Um, are you more of a TV person? front of the camera, everyone is watching, seeing you, or you don't want to be seen, but you want to be heard, so more like a podcast. Is that the way you speak? Maybe you write books, screenplays for movies, so you're more in the background. You write the songs for someone else to sing, perform. Maybe you're in between mix, yeah? You love interviews and sometimes you're out full and sometimes totally back. That's more me and sometimes I need my time by myself. I can do that for days, a few weeks, and then I can go out again and pull back in. So what is, what is your rhythm? Where do you feel comfortable in? And it's important that you said when you create your envision, you see where you're comfortable in, where you feel like yourself. Have you changed yourself for others? Are you rigid, even though you're soft, just that others understand you better? Maybe it's now time to teach them how you function. Are you more the woman, I'm more on the soft side? 
not that I cannot sing really loud and the masculine songs and tones come and they're woof, and then when I channel the dances, <laughs> yeah, the woof, I have Maori men, <laughs> suddenly the more quiet. Um, Mylene gets really, really tough, strong, wild. So what is within you? So adapt all of these things, your, your branding, your, in, even your colors. Right? There's a funny story. My friend, she came over from the U.S. to visit me. And she said, Marlene, your whole house and your clothing reflects all of those colors that are your branding colors. And I said, yes, you're so right. Not that I have not used them already before and I always fall back to them. But my whole, it, it became aware that I'm really living my business also in every other aspect in my home. So again, the whole, it's, uh, or even garden, right? What kinds of flower colors I love. So we're living our work and I think you're going to do the same or you're doing it already. It's inside out, outside in. There's no separation. And if it's you're separating, it may hurt you. So where can you make it more fluid? So bring in from you work something into your life and the other way around. Because then there's this harmony, this balance where we are us, where you are yourself, where I am myself in every single moment. This is where there's this peacefulness. And we are track with our principle we are track with our purpose we can go right into right we can <laughs> that's also what it means into into the light yeah there's the determination when when we were speaking about i was speaking about um, uh, not the grove the in the forest where the light clearing <laughs> where the light comes in now we see this beautiful there's a, a beautiful uh, a rock and, and there's grass and moss growing and all this surrounding there was a determination to go to look for this place the determination to look for that stage yeah i mean i, I had a determination to go and find a radio station I had a determination to create all those interviews when I'm at home with, so I don't have to travel. Yeah? I had a determination to look for the stage in LA. I looked at my rhythm. When was the right time to go so it is light, easy to do for me? In in, com in unison with my son's vacation in Germany, we have it easier. We have a six times vacation, yeah? You, so you can spread out through the year. That's very nice. They uh, always give like a breather. So I have time where I can leave and be here or take him along. I love that to do my work. Because this is also to make it light, to feel it light, right? To, to make movement easy, to take action fast and with no thoughts. Is, I, taught, I, oh, I uh, taught my son about myself. I'm myself in front of him the whole time. I don't change my roles. I'm mom, then I'm the performer, then I'm the painter, then I'm the singer, then the, the speaker, the athlete, the cook, you know, all of those things that we are. And so he, he grew up with me being me, acknowledging me, and it's also I try to give him space to live, that he can live his life and be as he, as he is. And then I remember back to that radio show, I asked him, can I do a Tilo once a month? Should I do it uh, four times a month? And that question came and he, he said, four times a month. I said, yeah, why? Why do you say that? Yeah, mama, so more people can hear you. It touched me deeply. But I asked him, so because why? Because it was important for me to uh, have it quiet in the house. 
And so he knew and he made with me the decision, in these moments he will be quiet. I had now five years this radio show. He's always quiet on those Tuesdays. Yeah? So if he understands me fully, I understand him fully, then there is a beautiful harmonic, harmonious dance, how we live our life and how we create and grow together. So if you have a partner, the same thing happens. Are you open or family or even parents? Let your parents know how you function, what you desire, what your dreams are. So they can open and bring their beautiful wisdom in with you. So much easier as a community that we have to move by ourselves slowly. You do take the action alone, but you're in comforted, embraced by everyone, by everything, right? With that and exercise of this awareness. This is going to get your rhythm. To, to feel this free, to create this harmony. Hmm, isn't this beautiful? And so the light, you feel light, right? If all that that you thought that is enclosing you is gone and is even moving you forward and uplifting and celebrating with you, it's easy, easier, lighter to step into the light nudge forward into those rays that are coming down to shine the light on beautiful you. And especially when you're coming this way, you are, you are, you're shining too, right? Out of each little cell. song another one right i'm feeling some pulling a little back like you want to go into that ray and you see it so yeah uh, so strong and then the dark and then there's this light but it's not this way there's this whole in between phase of this grayish and getting white and white and white and light and light and light so our light Right? There's also when we move ourselves, our energies up to shine even more. There's this light. As we raise our vibrations, the light frequency changes, the light color changes. You know, the, a, a more dense white to a more, less, 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 or more, more, less opaque, almost in, yeah, into invisible light. And then the different color hues. You see that as well, from the very light to the more dark. And in a way, there is no really white and really dark, because if you go through the light, it goes a little softer and less, again, on the other side as well. And it goes nicely around. So start slowly, nudge forward into the center of the light, where it is bright, more bright. You stand this way, it's practice. It's practice. 
and it frees you up as you move forward. I was, uh, when I came out of college, starting as a landscape architect and then you write, then I looked for, to sublet a studio to paint. I was missing the painting. Um, we had all this, we painted in all these layers, right? That was before the computer time. So I was missing this interactiveness. But what on the other side, that's because we were concentrating on all those layers that were on top of each other. It was then this movement, this small hand movement, right? So then over time, when I painted, I got larger and larger, I held it and then I put it on the table so I could get bigger movements. Then I put it on the floor, to huge. And at the end, I had, uh, five by eight foot uh, paintings. I'm, I mean, you can dance. I danced. And even with Tilo on my back, with my son on my back, right? Dancing movements. Freeing myself up. So I freed myself up to paint a big one. I didn't just go in front of the painting and then was like, couldn't. I started small, but maybe you can. So your experience may be different than mine. Practice. Like me also practicing singing my tones. I was not allowed to stay in music class, and you have to. Um, when I went to school in Switzerland, you had to, all the way to the final 13th grade. In the last two years, he threw me out, my teacher. I was disturbing with my tones, and I don't know. I was really happy. It saved two hours. I could do whatever I wanted to do. Ah, the sun is shining, coming out. And um, so you can, you know, I became quiet, never saying anymore. Until that, that one day when I was at the esoteric uh, show, and suddenly I started singing, and then I practiced in the wind, and I practiced under the shower, and, and you know how it cut to the radio show. Practicing how people react to my voice. And especially because I never know what comes out until I open myself up to sing or to speak. You know, so to move into the light also means to lighten yourself up in, con in, in what is controlling. So I let go of what is I'm controlling about. So at the radio show, or even here, I don't have a script, or maybe there's a few words of a layout, if at all. So I can be totally in connection with everyone and everything around me and bring out what is needed, what words want to be spoken. Because there's such a, a vastness out there of reactions, people, with so many facets. I can't even fathom all of them. I have a certain understanding to them, but not all of it. And then that's what is so nicely, surprisingly. So that comes with, then when that light, you know, it's not just the light, that light shines, the brightness and the less brightness, or the sun ray that is warming you up. Yeah, but it is also the weight makes you light. I love that. It's this interplay of those two words where you don't use so much energy. That becomes easy. And if you're fearful, we condense, we use so much energy to push ourselves. So I invite you just to open up a little bit, even because to open up again or to move away, to pull our particles apart again to expand also needs energy. So take your time and, and, and do it in your rhythm, in, in, in your speed. Sometimes I'm bing, and sometimes I can't. I have to go very slow. Sometimes I have to go backwards for a little bit to come forward again. Yeah, so then it's light. Because if I feel there is not, not light enough, am I already 
doing what I really love to do? Is there something else that I need to look at or not beforehand? What is me pulling me down instead of lifting me up? Because I want to walk like an elf. Are you with me? <laughs> you know, when I'm outside, it, the elves, I see, you know, we float. It's a floating. They, you don't need energy to put them down hard. That's all. Oh, it is like there's an exchange between the earth and the ground and you, like we were doing in the exercise before. So in, we walk on that exchange, we sense into it. We have these energies, we connect to our earth all the way to the core and maybe out on the other side again. At the same time, we bring in information and the light and the energy, the primal lights, the white, uh, the blue and gold, right? And it comes into our body, connects, moves up and down, but in the center, we make the mushiki and send it out. That's what we bring then out. Our uniqueness of our style, of your style. You bring that out. How you have cooked your soup with all the herbs that's in there. So feel the lightness of walking, floating. And you're always connected. And it's, you know, we connect down and up as you wish. Sometimes you're more up there, sometimes you're more here. That's perfect. I have days where I'm not here. My watch runs much quicker. <laughs> Until the moment I know I'm back into my body. And that's okay. Again, that's my rhythm. I let others know that I'm not here. Or when I, that I don't function as well. Or I cannot do brainstorm with others, right? Because it also is natural that you're always connected. Both directions, all the time. Don't punish yourself to being too big on one or the other or in the middle. It would be like a pancake. You would be as well. <laughs> like flat. And we're not. With these beautiful beings walking, taking strides forward, backwards in any directions, or dancing alone or with others to move into lightness. So, bring in that vibration, go into these different uh, vibratory uh, centers to lift you up, to enlighten you. Mahao! energy to move quickly or slowly, however you decide. Important. <laughs> yeah? And it really 
play with this, uh, with your life. It's, I always see like a dance. And then, you know, if, if, if you're in this dancey mood, if uh, all of the particles with us, you know, they they dance, they, 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 they play, they go also into the own rhythm. Each cell, each uh, not atom, photon, plays with each other and dances with each other. So you start glowing because there is this liveliness and the little edge, because you know you're doing the right thing, you know you're doing the thing for you that you are about. You're dancing your wisdom, you're singing your wisdom, you're writing your wisdom. Your truth is pouring out of each pore, out of each cell, out of your hair. You know, it's this all shows our wisdom. And you notice how great you feel. Others will notice and they will tell you that you're glowing, that you're radiant, that you're brilliant, your brilliancy. It's like you're, there is a clearness to it also. Uh, so brilliant also means you know what you're doing. You're clear, like a crystal, crystal clear. So even there, it's, it's, you're reflecting what is coming in your zone because you're inviting in to play with everything that comes. It's like this exercise to see what is below. But now you're, you're so aware of it. Now you start playing with it and playing with it and being part of it and celebrating, celebrating to, together. Because in every moment, you're you. Also when you cry, always, you know, when you laugh. And you will have that joy even when you're sad in it because you know this creating more brilliancy to you. It's glowing, you know, because you're reflecting. You don't have to, you have to hide your glow. You can leave them away the makeup because you're glowing, because it's just matting your glow. You're not hiding anymore yourself. What brings you to glow and shine, right, is, is um, that you come forward the way you are, you dress the way you are, your hair color is the way you are. Yeah, and what makes our skin glow? If there is a play, when we are not hiding our skin, when we've rested, when we use nutrition and do ask your body what it likes and what it doesn't like, what makes it tired and what doesn't, it's a quick way to figure out if what you eat is right for you. What do you put on your skin? Is there an exchange? Is this a natural product? Is there an exchange happening when you put it on? With your hair. You know, it's so important. We glow in different stages in our life differently. So at the hair, if it is, mine was really blonde. Now it's this color. When I was younger, it was blonde, changed to this color. One day it will be more white. But also my skin changes. Your skin too, it, it adapts. Yeah, the pigmentation adapts with our age. So let us, adapt and play together with it. Also with my hair color, I knew I wanted to, it was important for me to be my truth. Do not color it anymore. Because I, okay, just because I was so blonde, 
when I was younger or later as a, a, a young woman living at the ocean. I was in the water, it was really bland. And now if it does happen, and if it uh, is more light and I'm at the ocean, but then my skin is also darker. So you know that it, there's always this interplay. The clothing, when you go out into the world, yeah? Is it yours or is it looked at on stage? Do people look at your clothing instead of, are they looking at your face? What pops out first? There's a, a nice test, or I, I notice it, maybe you notice it too. So if you try on clothes and you come, it's always good to put something out and then step into the open to see how it is. And see, observe your own reaction to yourself. When you have a new dress on and you step out, how do you react when you see yourself? Do you even see yourself or do you see the dress first? So we can uh, follow our own intuition. When you get things for your speaking there in medicine, you will notice your body leads you into certain shops. Um, you will notice you turn around and then you go for one item. Get that item. Uh, get that certain clothes. Set intention what you need. Then you go shopping and it will appear. This is really when we are so clear from the core what is driving us when you are following your vision. Even these things of going shopping is minimized. There's no energy. I don't have to look for hours for a thing. Go into city and boom, you go into a store, it's right there. Or sometimes you're surprised you're getting one thing that's needed. There's another that, that shows up. Then you get it. You don't know for what it is. For that moment, it's medicine or even sometimes for a later moment. Suddenly you have a said, oh, that's, it makes click, click, click with something else in your life. So that's why I believe it's so important that you take the time to observe yourself, to become aware of all of you, all of you. <laughs> And that you cherish all of you. Even your wrinkles. Because they tell the story. It is as you are on stage, when you're stepping into the light, when you're writing. Write your story, write with your experiences. When you speak about them and you have your, there is a, volume, a history, the energy that goes with it. If you repeat someone else's and just, shit, it, it's flat. Who are you? You want to bring that voice out. It, it vibrates you. People are very observant and they feel it, the sense that they don't always understand it. But when you go out with fully you and you're having fun and you want to embrace everyone in an audience, they will feel that. So go out with that love. Speak your truth. All the time. Sometimes things happen to you and it's, it's not the time yet to speak about it, but you will notice then you speak about other things that are important or lead, leading to it. If you have not digested it in a way, or the time is not right yet, then don't, don't speak about it. But do share everything you can speak about it. And if you want to speak about it and you can't, what needs to be resolved? Or looked at? Or be experienced? You don't have to be afraid even to bring out the really deep you. <laughs> People are interested. That's what they connect to. I'll tell you a quick story. I um, 
five years ago, six years ago, I was in a video challenge, 30 days. And um, 33 of us finished the challenge with all 30 videos. Many of us have seen each other, become friends. This magic happened. Why did that happen? We opened up. When things were not happening, you know, because you do it every single day, part of my life I showed, others were even very afraid to show themselves visibly. And they, got, they said that in the video. So they got encouragement and they got, uh, they got a feeling of security and embracement and comfort. The next time they nudged further, I was at that time also very sad because something was happening to the uh, father of my son. Yeah? I, I talked about it. Not fully, but as far as I could go in that moment. And so the responses, um, the comments, were the biggest and the largest that became very clear through that challenge for me. People that um, opened up. Because others had something really to attach, feel. You could be felt. I could be felt, the other person. I could feel them deeply. I had experienced something maybe like that in my life, myself. So that is what's bonding, that is what bringing us together, that is great relationship. Because when you speak your truth out into the world, when you walk your truth, when you present your truth, we're building a constant relationship to each single person surrounding us, even if it's in a group. Yeah? Bring that together. Also, your voice, you, you can feel it if, you, uh, if someone is not themselves, they speak at a higher, higher pitch, a lower pitch. The volume is less. If they are not themselves, they're so tight in the lungs, they can't get the air out. Or they hold that breath. And when you're doing that, if you're holding your, your breath, then you're not so secure in, in expressing your way how you want to, to go out into the world, how to speak about your painting, how um, to speak about your writing, or write even about your writing, because it, it's it transcends how you feel is how you walk, how you dress, you know, you dress in your style, in your colors. Again, even that is the second skin. It is, is our voice, our clothing. You didn't touch. <laughs> I do that a lot. Yeah, breasts, as we said, with their voice. If I hide them, if I tuck in, no, we spoke about that, present them to the world. Then if I present them, my voice comes out differently. My gaze is on people, I can interact. I don't pull back. So do you pull back then? It's in, important, you know, uh, if you're on stage and suddenly you're stepping backwards, why are you stepping backwards? Are you, what are you afraid of? See if you're stepping forward, what happens? If you dance in a workshop, anywhere. You see it, it's um, very interesting when using myself, when they learn to speak, they have to um, hold a presentation. I think they started at um, third grade already. Always a little bit more. So I remember Tila would go back and 
and use the, the wall as a security to hold him because he was afraid. And then every time he spoke, he was a let's practice. I would sit there, I would take even a cat to cats to <laughs> as an audience, so that he would feel that there's an audience and get more comfortable and speak about it again. And he would move forward, become more comfortable. So even a practice and, and that you feel uh, secure in an open space. So I was also speak, you know, where, where do you voice it? You have to create an environment where you feel comfortable. So I like to be open. It's not so difficult for me. I, as a landscape architect, even designed landscapes, um, if I could do it more for me, where there was open spaces and tight and open. I love that interplay of mystical and non-mystical open and closing, yeah? That's, it's again like this breathing. But there were uh, students that liked an encavement in a way. They had two corners and then the big desk. Yeah, and maybe something on the desk. So if you present your work, create a spatial space to feel comfortable. So if you're uh, signing books, they cannot put you in the middle of the room. Tell them what is important for you, that you like a wall left and right. Yeah, you want to be close or less close to people. Share it. You can still build up an inter uh, connectiveness with people, but in your style. And I think it's lost too often. Put everyone into the center of a stage. Now that's what we think about. Then start with a small one where it's nice and cozy, like in the old opera houses here. You have tiny spaces or um, even build something around you that is in the middle of the center of the space. So you have the feeling like you're a little tucked in. Because again, then you expand if you're comfortable, your body is more open, you're glowing, there is every particle in you has more time to, and, and space to vibrate, to shine out into the world. And then you're also not so nervous and it creates more, more possibilities and it's more fun to observe all different kinds of artists creative people if, yeah? and it doesn't matter I'm, I'm speaking no more of you know uh, uh, people on stage but you could be an uh, engineer you're very abstract creative thinker it could for business meetings it's the same what kind of room do you hold your meetings in sitting yeah create a nice stage for yourself where you feel comfortable it's a place. Maybe you like even to do more outside, outside uh, in the landscape because you feel supported and you love the air. So create workshops, lecture something outside. And people will learn to adapt to you. Uh, it was interesting in, in college, I was in, in my master's, we were sitting outside, it was so beautiful. It was in Athens, um, Georgia, US. And um, we were a small group and our teacher was sitting there. We had one woman that came um, from Korea with us, student, and we were speaking how beautiful it is to be outside. But one woman didn't like it so much because she said she couldn't concentrate. She was so taught always to uh, be inside when she studied. And the Korean woman said, oh, we go outside on purpose, so we learn to focus, to be centered in everything and still listen to ourselves or to listen to the conversation of someone. That got me to think a lot. So again, it, it's practice, but then it's maybe if you hold yours outside and people are afraid that they can't even concentrate them, invite them in to this con new concept. So it goes back to teach people more of how you think and how like 
how you like to live. Speak out your truth. Use your voice. I am a big believer that you can do this, that you can create the environment you want to be in, All right? So that we also create beauty, not just for ourselves, so we can be the beautiful self, but that I can see it in you and you can see it in me. And we both can see it in others. And that we see it also in the world and even create more beautiful spaces and places with respect and, and interactiveness. And if you become so clear about all these things, you know, there's this searching, it disappears. There's this peacefulness because you glow and shine because you know exactly what you are about, what woman you are. You know you have your support system. If it's me, my son, family, siblings, parents, friends, close friends that live close to you or far away that you see often or seldom, colleagues. It's even important all the people you go shopping where you go shopping, even where you go shopping, it has to be medicine, that you can speak about who you are to the clerk or the, the um, vegetable store owner. Yeah, it's important, I believe. Even the, the bakery in Germany, we have so many bakeries. Pick the one you love to go to. And, and, and speak also there your voice. I remember I went here to a, a city. I found a small bakery woman. She started um, the little French style. I like that. They have really yummy croissants and she makes them out of quinoa. So they're gluten-free. The summer I was in California, Clear Lake, I think it was called, the lake. And there's a young man who opened a, a, a little bakery. His father is French, so he has a combination of French-American uh, style of baking. He got the flour from, from um, France. And my friend I visited, she eats gluten-free. So I went to him and told her about this wonderful woman that she's making quinoa croissants to inspire him, maybe to try a new style. So maybe that my friend would have beautiful gluten-free croissants and really taste well. And one day I came back and I met the baker, she came out and I told her about the story. And it, look at what happens, we connect people. I connected two beautiful people that were interested in voicing their style of creativity And they connected through me because I also spoke about something. So go more in discourse. And people love to learn about you as you love to learn about others. Because why would you even start being interested in shining the light and shine speaking? This is beautiful. This is. This is, ah, this is you, the beautiful you, the grand, the vastness of you coming out, you living your principle. Bullion, <laughs> <laughs> 
la 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 Every single moment to free up, to embrace yourself, your style, the way you express yourself, your talent, whatever your talent is, to share it, to invite others to share theirs with you so we can even build up on that and create even more beautiful things. All of this. That's why we're coming here together at this summit to empower each woman we meet, for you to empower each woman you meet, for me to empower each woman I meet. At the same time, empowering myself, lifting myself up, raising myself up. Yeah, even if I do it with my energy, you do it through your energy. We do it together. It's more fun, it's faster, more speedy. To become very clear this way. And what you're all about makes it easier for you to step into action, to even envision what you want to create, what you desire to create, what needs to be created. Now, for this beautiful earth, for you, for me, for us, with ease, with joy, with lightness, with dance, with celebrating each other, in a way, in full exposure, in total truth, in openness. In many different outlets, many different lights of vibration, materials. You're glowing your best because you show all of you. Yeah? All of you don't hide it. So I can read you better. That you can smile, you can release all your facial expressions. And I feel your heart. And see your light shine. That I can hear your voice. That I can feel embraced by the volume, the tones that come in and transform me. Because you're speaking. Such clarity, such love, such magnitude, such beauty. <laughs> Because you are your beautiful self. Thank you very much for going on this journey with me. Coming together, shining together is really what I'm here for on this earth to illuminate the beauty really in each single second of everything. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to see you shine and stand in your brilliance, soak it in your warmth like the sun rays when I sit outside to inspire me to be inspired by you, to be motivated by you, to be brought to tears by you. Put a big smile on my face. 
And they have this, this exhale of comfort, how magnificent life is. Thank you. This is Miley. Bye-bye.